was the night before Christmas and deep in the kitchen. Chef was preparing all kinds of fixins. Yorkshire and roast and Christmassy treats, all for the next day's festive eats. The children were all snug and nestled in their beds, while ovens and processors were mixing new spreads. The last dish on the menu was a bowl full of jellies. Tomorrow the family would all have full bellies. With a wink of his eye and a twist of his head, Chef needed some sleep and was off to bed. Today it's a special holiday show and everything yummy that you'll need to know. I'm Chef Garrett Shack, your congenial host, and today that's what we're cooking on the coast. season. The rush and bustle of shopping, a time for good friends and family, a time to reflect on the past year, and always a good time for good food. Today, we can't help with the shopping, but we can get you on track for some good food. How about holiday hors d'oeuvres, Christmas breakfast, and beef roast with Yorkshire pudding? Okay, lots of stuff going on here today. This first segment is all about hors d'oeuvres. I've got some uh, hard boiled eggs here that we're just going to do a quick deep fry on. It's like your spin on a deviled egg, but we're going to make it crispy and gooey so it'll be delicious. So we've got some eggs, we've taken the yolk out already and we've saved that for our filling. And we're just gonna shake these around in the yolk a little bit, in the, in the egg, and then into some seasoned breadcrumbs right here, just like that. And I've done a bunch up ahead of time. Again, we've got lots to pack into this, uh, this short amount of time. So we're gonna take this plate over to our deep fryer. Don't forget whenever you're deep frying, not too hot, check the temperature first. Don't overcrowd your pan, okay? Don't fill it up. You can see we've got some done up ahead of time here. I'll just pull those over. You definitely want to sit them down on a little bit of uh, paper towel here to let some of that, uh, that extra deep frying grease come off. Nice and crispy, golden brown coating on there. And then we've got this filling here for them. So your traditional kind of deviled egg filling. Egg yolk, a little bit of mayonnaise. I put some chives in here. Salt and pepper, of course. And then we're just gonna dab these down right in the middle. There we go. You get the idea. And then we want to top it with a little bit of crispy bacon. Does not look great. Man, th those will knock the socks off your guests when they stop by. Next up, we're going to do turkey skewers. So it's kind of like a turkey meatball that's on a skewer, and we're gonna wrap it with some sage and some dried cranberry. So I've already pre-skewered a few, but I'll show you how we do them. We've got a skewer. We wanna take a little bit of sage and some dried cranberries and sort of make a little, little parcel with them. We wanna tuck the edges over and pierce it right through here. There we go. And now we've got our meatballs. Boom. There's our, there's our skewer done, okay? Now, how did we get those meatballs, you ask? Well, we went to our local butcher and we grabbed a turkey sausage. This one happens to be kind of a spicy turkey sausage because I like the heat and it's always fun. You just take this in the casing and you kind of do a little twist here and voila, beautiful little meatballs, okay? You're just gonna sear those off in a hot pan like I've done over there. Finish them in the oven so they're cooked all the way through. Really important when you're working with raw chicken or poultry or turkey. Okay, now any good cocktail party, you kind of want to have you know, three or four bites per person. You're not, if you're not looking to feed them dinner and you just want them to have a little snack with their drinks, three or four per person. There we are. And now, our last piece for this segment is coming out of our oven. We've got some crostinis that have been toasting away in there. It's very simply seasoned, these guys here, with some uh, olive oil and sea salt. And then I want to put a little pesto on them. This one here is a little unique pesto. It's a stinging nettle and uh, pumpkin pesto. Pumpkin seed pesto, rather. We're just going to put a little touch on there. There we are, add some color, some festive, a uh, little festive touch with the green and you're gonna see the piece that's missing here is our roasted tomatoes. So look at these guys. Pop them right on there like that. You don't need me to show you how to roast tomatoes, do you? I mean, we've done it a few times on the show. We just quartered them, drizzled them with some olive oil, some salt and pepper, fired them in a nice, nice oven about 350 degrees and let them roast until they're just starting to mellow out there, just like that. There we are, but we're not done yet. We're not done yet. We are going to add a little goat's cheese because goat's cheese goes really well with this type of little bruschetta here. Okay, and we'll give it a little drizzle with some reduced balsamic. Okay, while we head off to break, I'm going to finish up all these appetizers to get them onto platters, but there's still lots to come. We've got Christmas breakfast and our roast beef and Yorkshire pudding. We also have a few special guests dropping by as we celebrate the festive season on a special Cooking on the Coast. <laughs> Ho, ho, ho. 
It's our Cooking on the Coast holiday special. Welcome, my little sous chefs. Sydney Shack, Emerson's Shack. Thanks for coming on the show today. You're welcome. So, what's our favorite breakfast on uh, on Christmas morning? Anything. Crepes. Crepes. Yeah, it kind of goes without saying. So let's Hello, make crepes. some crepes and show everybody at home how to make them, okay? Mm -hmm. So Sid, why don't you start by adding the flour to our mixer. Okay. Go ahead, dump the whole thing. Yeah. Go, yeah, nice, Ooh. good sound effects. Emerson, butter please. We've got some melted butter here. Dump it right in, being very careful, yeah, nice. Now guys, we're using salted butter, so we're not gonna add any extra salt to this recipe, but Sid, we need some sugar. So we want about a tablespoon and a half. There we go. If I let, if I let him do it, it would have, the whole bowl would have been gone. Emerson, one egg, please. Crack it straight in. Sydney? Oh, okay. crack. Yep, give it a knock on there. Whoops. Oh, <laughs> there you go, good job. Very nice, very nice. Where's your copy? Now, what else do we need in here? We need some more liquid in there, don't we? Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, Sydney, please put in the milk. Okay. <laughs> Dump it all in. Awesome. Emerson, how about the water, please? We need a little bit of lukewarm water right here, that one. Okay, lid goes on. Heads up. We're going to go over to our mixing mixer here. <laughs> Ready? Here comes the noise. Keep going. Hold it down. Hold it all the way in. Keep it going. We got Christmas music in the kitchen. All right, here we go. That looks good. Okay. okay. We're going to pour that out into here. Now, ideally, you'd kind of want to let this rest overnight, but... Uh, We'll start right now, okay? Hey, Dad. Did yeah, you know Christmas trees have been sold been sold in North America since 1850? What? What? That's crazy. That's such a long time ago. Okay, Almost. here we go. Onto the pan, and then we got to work quickly here. Nice hot pan. Mwah. Yeah, and then we want to roll it around on the pan. Oh, we need more batter. Here we go. We kind of want to work it all around. If we have a spatula here, that's handy. We can just spread it out nicely. It's like spreading icing on a cake. Oh, yeah, totally is, isn't it? But you're right. Okay, what, hap what happens at home with our first pancake? It's on. It's yeah. uh, to the trash. To the trash, yeah. It's the one that never seems to work out for us the first time, does it? Nope. But that's all right. Okay, ready, guys? Yeah. Oh, there we are. That was a good flip, hey? That was it a good flip. kind of like a skull. That looks pretty tasty, though, doesn't it? Okay, let's look out. So what's your favorite uh, pancake, what are you, uh, crepe? What, what are you gonna put in it? I put some peanut butter with some bitter bananas. Ooh, peanut butter and bananas, that sounds great. Well, you better peel up a banana here. <laughs> <laughs> your brother's a bit of an over actor, I think, hey? Yeah. <laughs> okay, now your crepe, here we go. Mine always ends up good. Yeah, this one comes out nice, hey? Here we go, spread it's it around. Always the second crepe works out better for some reason, doesn't it, Sid? Yeah. What are you, what are you doing over there? <laughs> Eating bigger? Yeah, good thing I was paying attention. Okay, put your bananas and your peanut butter in there, pal. I'm keeping a close eye on that. What's your flavor going to be? Mm. Lemon and sugar. Oh, Lemon and sugar. Oh, very classic. I like that. My second okay. favorite crepe. <laughs> Spread it in there. Good thing that's your pan. Here we got crepe, hey? How's it going there, buds? Horrible. Peanut butter everywhere? Yeah. That's all right. Have fun. Make a mess. I can't talk. Look at that one, see? Oh. See, second one always goes out there. Yeah, second one always works out so much better. Hey. All right, that looks good, but you know what's going to happen? You're going to roll that all up anyway, right? Yeah, we're going to get okay. whatever. Hurry, hurry, here's hurry. Emerson's crepe, ready to go. It's a burrito. Yeah. There we are. We fed you. Okay, Em, what are you going to have on yours? You said lemon? Yes. And, and of course, silly question, but sure. <laughs> there you go. You spilled some. Oh, did I? Oh, no. Like a Dad's last like, but not least one for Dad here. It's a burrito today. I'm having a burrito. Sid, what, you, Sid, what do you know about Christmas, bud? You got any Christmas facts that are interesting? Yes. The most popular Christmas song of all time is Bing Crosby, version of A White Christmas. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, that's interesting. That's a good song, isn't it? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even though I never sugar. listened to it. <laughs> it's sweeter. All right. There you go. Why don't you go ahead and have a bite, Sid, and okay. tell me how it goes. Mm. How would I flop this one over here? Whoop. Whoop. Add some stuff in Okay, we got to put some. I was going to put chocolate and hazelnuts in mine. So I'm going to flip that over. Dang. No, that's a nice crepe. Is that a good crepe? Did you uh -huh. do a good job? Uh-huh. Awesome. Hey, give mine a couple seconds here, and then we'll be ready to go. How about, hey, Sid, how about putting some chocolate on there, too? It's Christmas morning, after all, right? Yeah. There you go. My turn. Another flip. Ah, some lovely hazelnuts. A little bit of chocolate. And then we fold these guys up. That looks a little dry. Oh, does it? Well, maybe we'll have to put some lemon on there then, too. Hey, or some maple syrup. What do you think? Maple syrup! Maple syrup. Everybody loves maple syrup. All right, my crepe's all set. We're not done yet. We still have our main course ahead. 
beef roast and Yorkshire pudding. You won't want to miss that. Coming up next on our Cooking on the Coast holiday special. One, two, three, four, one, two. Excellent job. Excellent job. Lovely crepes. Try something. Wrapping paper's all cleaned up, the kitchen's tidied from our breakfast of perfection, and with me is Sam to help pull together our roast beef and Yorkshire pudding. Sammy, how are you? I'm good, how are you? It's great to have you on the show. Yes, Sam, it's been a little while. For those of you that know, don't know, Sam keeps me organized here on the show, <laughs> so uh, it's my pleasure to have her here and to uh, help me get this whole thing put together. Yes, right? absolutely. Okay, so where are we going to start? Well, I think you're going to start on the beef, yep. getting all the vegetables ready and I was going to start making the Yorkie batter. Sounds good. Well, uh, why don't I get on with that and can you just tell uh, our viewers a little bit about the Yorkshire batter? Like the... Yeah, you can do whatever size batch you want. You just want equal parts egg, flour, and milk. Right, so, we're so doing I could about... do like one liter, one liter, one liter. As that's long a, as it's like that's that. a big party. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm doing one cup of flour, Okay. one cup of milk, and four to five eggs, depending on the size of your eggs. All right, so while she's doing that, we're gonna put together kind of a rub for our, uh, our roast. What we need here is some vegetables, and that's gonna become the base and our vegetables for the dinner here. So I've got some celery stalks, and I'm just gonna chop up nice and rough. Fairly big chunks here, because they are gonna be cooking the whole time the roast is. And we've got about a third of a, of a rib roast here, of a prime rib, and it's gonna take about an hour and a half or so to get up to a, a nice medium rare. We've got some carrots that we've washed nicely. How are you making out there, Sam? Good, I'm just gonna add a little bit of nutmeg. Nutmeg, the secret ingredient, hey? It is, yes. Very nice. I need an onion in here. So far, I've got onions, carrots, and celery. So your classic sort of mirepoix or aromatic vegetables. Okay, so Sam, that looks like you've got the batter all mixed together. What uh, now, do you go right away or what happens next? No, it's best to leave it for four hours, preferably overnight, in the fridge. Yep. So I have some made. So okay. I'll bring this to the fridge and I'll grab cool. one you, I've already You made. go to the fridge. Um, I've got a whole clove of garlic. I'm just going to fire in here. It's going to add lots of yummy flavor. Got some whole rosemary that's going to go in. This is going to create the base. Not only is it going to kind of like give us some yummy vegetables to eat a little bit later, but it's also going to create a great, uh, great sauce for our gravy and our vegetables for this dish. What's this bad boy? That, that's a celery egg. Celery egg, okay. Alright, so we're just going to give it a quick peel here, and on each side. Okay, tired of, tired of me chopping vegetables, Sam. How about uh, what we do next with Yorkshire puddings? Because it's a kind of a process. We can't just, you know, fire it in a pan and away we go, right? What do we do? So in the oven we have a bake sheet with a um, muffin yeah. tray. Okay. Half filled with vegetable oil or a, a high heat oil. Right. We're going to let that heat up for like... 10 minutes. 10, 10 minutes till it gets minutes. nice and hot, right? Yeah. yeah, in a probably like, well, we got the oven up pretty high there, 450 yeah. degrees. You Absolutely. do want it nice and high because you want the eggs to react and puff up really yeah, well. Yeah, that's it, right? What's a Yorkshire pudding if it's like this flat hockey puck, right? We Definitely. want these puffy things, don't we? Okay, Sam, I've got all the vegetables whacked in here, minus our mite tomatoes, which I'm going to throw in now. Yeah. Okay, now I need to, I'm going to bring the roast over here. Look at that rib roast. Nice, nice bit of fat cap on there. You can see some of the fat in between. Looks delicious. Right? And mm -hmm. that's what we're looking for, right? We want a bit of that fat in uh, any time we're using a roast like this. Oh, otherwise it's way too dry. Yeah, exactly. So here's what, uh, here's what my rub's going to look like. Um, rosemary. Sprinkle lots of rosemary on there. Got some Dijon. I'm just going to plunk it all right on top. Okay, that goes right on top. We need some salt. Fairly liberal with the salt. This is going to make like a crust around the outside of that uh, the rib, right? It's delicious. Yep. They call it a bark usually on roasts yeah. and yeah, that's right. Smoked meats. Yeah, smoked meats and uh, and rib roasts or roasts, anything that kind of has that crust on it or a bark, just like you would have on a tree or something like that. Mm-hmm. Here's that fancy sauce again. Yeah, it's delicious. It is good. Yeah, adds a bit of salt and some depth of flavor. And now I'm just going to rub all this around. So while I'm sort of spreading this all out evenly, why don't you check on our pan in the oven there? Sure, and, it should uh, be nice and hot. Yeah, we can show everybody how to do this whole Yorkshire pudding business. 
I think there's a lot of people at home that, uh, you know, shy away from making Yorkies because they figure it's probably a pretty tough process, but... You do have to get it right, otherwise you'll end up with a little bit of a hockey puck, but... Yeah. And be careful because the oil is really hot. Yeah, it should be smoking though, right? Like, we yeah. actually, we want it nice and hot. Just watch your arm there. <laughs> Ooh, I can feel the heat off that. Awesome. Do you want a hand getting the other, getting to the oven? Uh, why don't you go ahead and do that? Let's watch you do that and then I can, uh, then okay. you can help me with the, uh, the Yorkie. All right, or so you'll want to, you want to you'll wanna carefully pour batter in. It should, you don't want to overfill them because yeah. they are going to puff up quite a bit. So half to three quarters full. Right, perfect. I mean, looks like you've got the perfect temperature there because it's sizzling right away, going at it. You keep doing that. I'm going to go get the other roast and put this one in, okay? Okay. Sam. Holy oh, smokes. that smells delicious. I have to have to admit, we got we should let the audience know at home that uh, your roasting pan is much nicer than mine, hey? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't gonna say it. It is the magic of television a little bit here, folks, but uh, you know you can see the idea is still the same, right? So Sam, we got all those vegetables down at the bottom. We've got our roast going. Yeah. Well I, I gotta, wanna get these right back into the oh, oven. Yeah, let me get the other oven door for oh, you. Thank you. Okay, here we go. And we're gonna keep the heat the same, right? We still want that nice hot heat. Definitely, and you don't want to open the oven. No. Just leave them. How long, Sam? About 10 minutes or so? Yeah, 10, 10 minutes, 10, depending on how minutes. hot your oven is. Okay. We've got this roast out. I'm going to transfer it over to a plate to rest, because we want to make our get our vegetables out of there and get our sauce going. Okay, I'll take okay. this. Okay, I'm just going to tent this with a little tin foil, Sam. That's going to let it rest, right? Because like when we're dealing with any big chunk of meat like that, we want to let it rest for a little bit. Now I'm just going to take this rack out. Nice, nice. Oh, look at that. That looks amazing, doesn't it? All those delicious veg vegetables. 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 Yeah. So you're just gonna plate that up. Oh, hey, can yeah. I do this? Can I squeeze out the garlic chunks out of that guy? For sure. Nice. There we go. And then I'll pull that right out of there. Awesome. And then you're gonna scoop out all the veg. Mm-hmm. Nice, nice. Oh, found the other one. It's gonna there make go. the gravy even better. Oh, won't it though? So speaking of gravy, how are we gonna do this? With pan drippings, of course. Of course, yeah. We would, it wouldn't be a gravy without pan drippings, right? Absolutely. So let me, let me get the uh, let me get the stove turned on over here. We get a pan going. How are we going to thicken it? I was thinking we'd use a roux, so I'm going to use some of the fat that's already in the pan and mm -hmm. then some flour. Sounds good. Look at those vegetables. Yeah. Smokes the celery off right there. And if you have extra fat coming off your roast, you can always use that to make your Yorkshire puddings. Those vegetables are so good. I'll tell you what, that's the kind of stuff that makes people jolly right there. Definitely. Right? That's what yep. Christmas is all about. All right, so this one here, we don't have too much stuck to the bottom, so that's good. Mm -hmm. Where we can just pour this, transfer this right over into our thing. But you can't see there is a bit of fat in there, so we're going to use that to thicken our gravy. Tuck this one out of the way. Get that cranked up nice and high. There we go. A little more beef stock here. I'm just gonna add that to it because, you know, I don't know about your house, but mine, we love the gravy. What I wanna do here is just sprinkle a little bit of flour over the top, and then we're gonna whisk it all together. Do we have another, do we have a whisk still, Sam? Sure, yeah. Oh, and one down here. Oh yeah, let's use that guy. And what's gonna happen here is the fat that's come up to the top for our gravy is just gonna start to get incorporated by the flour, and then it'll help thicken our, uh, thicken our sauce, right? Definitely. All right, Sam, through the magic of television, our Yorkshires, let's have a look. Let's see how they're looking. I'm gonna I think grab they're them. pretty good. How are you feeling? Pretty confident. Confident? Yeah, yeah definitely. Right. You don't want to ruin Christmas. Oh, oh. holy smokes. They that puffed up beautifully. Look at that. That is fantastic. What a great Yorkshire pudding recipe, hey? Yeah, it's so easy. It really is, yeah. And more people should do it. The hardest part is, is cleaning the oven afterwards. <laughs> that's the tough part. Well, that's part. what the baking sheet's for. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay, the gravy's all set, too. While I'm pouring out the gravy, Sam, why don't you uh, plate those up for me? Sounds good. There we go. Lovely gravy. Nice. Nice and rich, just the way we like it. They're so light. 
Fantastic, hey? Yeah. Wow, this looks amazing, Sam. We've really uh, we've really outdone ourselves here for Christmas dinner, I think, it's, hey? Yeah, it's gonna be great. So we've got our roast resting, we've got our vegetables out, our Yorkshire puddings look phenomenal. Great job on those. Where would I Thank be without you? Very you? Much. Our gravy's ready and all set. I think uh, I think we're just about ready to uh, get our stuff to the plate, wouldn't you say? Yeah, definitely. Fantastic. Can't wait to dig in. Me neither. to enjoy this holiday feast than with your friends and family. Matt and Asher have joined us on the set. The kids are back. Sam, I think we pulled it off, bud. Oh no, everything looks great. It I does, doesn't it, hey? I'm really excited. Got some hot chocolate to try it all with. Hey, Matt, check this out. I made some uh, homemade Irish cream. You want a little nice. sip in there? Sure. Yeah. Thank you. You'll be able to find this recipe uh, on the website, so look for it. Do you want that? Uh, Just a little, a little bit. splash? Yeah. There you go, That's and great. I'll definitely have a little bit. <laughs> awesome. No way, no way. <laughs> All right. Cheers, everybody. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Thanks so much for being here to celebrate with me. There we go. Mmm, <laughs> delicious. Check out our website where you'll find more information on today's show. I want to thank my special guests, Emerson and Sydney. I've got Matt and Asher here with me, Sam Oldroyd, of course, for pulling it all together, and we can't forget the Victoria Concert Consort. I'm Garrett Shack. Thanks for watching, and don't forget, this holiday season, take some time out to enjoy friends and family, and of course, to savor the flavor. Happy holidays, everyone. To the holidays! <laughs> to the holidays! Hooray! What are we going to dig into first? Said you got to try those Yorkshire puddings. Thank you.